Well, howdy, everybody. <laughs> of course, as soon as I open my mouth, my computer starts doing something in the background that I don't want it to do. There we go. I love technology. <laughs> well, welcome, everybody. It is uh, 9 a.m. on the West Coast and noon on the East Coast. And it's Saturday, so this is Janet and Don Legere's Get Live Training uh, com weekly session. And as we all know, Janet and Don are off having fun. In fact, they're having so much fun that they know, don't even know what time it is anymore. Janet called me about half an hour ago and asked me how it went. <laughs> and I said, how did what go? And she said, well, the, you know, get live training. I told her, Janet, it's not for half an hour yet. <laughs> so they don't even know what's going on with the time. They're having such a good time. Um, but uh, we're going to have a good time, too. Uh, especially if you have not heard this before. <clears throat> Excuse me. Pardon me at, at the beginning if I have a little funny thing with my voice. Um, I've just had some kind of a low-grade bug for a couple of days, and yesterday I sounded like Tallulah Bankhead, but today I'm much better. I just hope it holds out through this whole thing. Let me find out. Give me a, give me a no in the text chat if you have not seen the colors of personality before, if you've not heard me talk about this. Just give me a quick no. I'd like to know who our first timers are for this information. Because this is the kind of thing, if you have heard it before, um, it's the kind of thing where you're going to find new information every time you do it, uh, every time you hear it. And uh, I, this is something that I've been talking about for a long time. And I learned it from a guy, a great guy named Pat Hintz, uh, who was a master coordinator at uh, one of the uh, network marketing companies that I used to work for. And uh, I'd actually heard about this a long time before and been introduced to it. I was introduced to it way back in the 1960s and uh, late 60s, early 70s. Um, let me ask you this, guys. Um, how many of you here are involved in network marketing? Give me a quick yes in the text chat if you are involved in network marketing of any kind. Um, just a yes or no is all I need. Well, I got, got one yes. Couple yeses. Okay, we're get, we're getting yeses down there, uh, and so in network marketing, you know, we actually talk to people. Now, if you're doing your internet marketing correctly, you know, uh, you're you'll also end up talking to people. I mean, uh, we go through this all the time, and we try and teach you that, uh, you know, all business is about relationships and it's about working with people, and um, even uh, you know. Even if you're, what you want to do is sim simply straight out affiliate marketing, then you're going to do yourself a lot of good if you also build a list uh, and develop relationships with people on the list because they will be continual buyers from you once they get to know, like, and trust you. Well, uh, so, so in my opinion, almost all of us who want to be successful online are going to have to develop some skills as far as Talking to people, um, as far as being relaxed and knowing what to talk to them about, let me ask you a really important question. How many of you, give me a yes in the text chat, if you think it would um, help you in your business to know exactly what to be talking to your prospect about at any given time. You know, all people are different. And uh, most of us do things uh, m most of us find ourselves in the situation, I'm getting lots of yeses there, um, most of us find ourselves in the situation where we're talking to people about the wrong things. You know, how many of you have ever had this happen to you? You, you are all uh, into your network marketing company and, you know, one of the things you like is that the products are all, uh, you know, one of the, well, let's say, let's do it this way. You really like the pay plan. You think the pay plan from your company is the best one that you've ever seen. And you sit down and you talk to somebody about it, and you're really hitting the pay plan, and here's how much money you can make and everything else, and they're just sort of, okay, uh, blah, 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 and the interview, however it happens online or on the phone or in person, just kind of, you know, ends, and that's it, and there's no decisions made, and, uh, you know, th that person just sort of disappears. And then you find them later on enrolled in the same company, <laughs> the one that you talked about, under somebody else. Has this ever happened? Give me a yes if that's happened to you. Because I know it's happened to me. And, uh, the, you know, several times I've asked, why? 
you know, I'm not a, a shrinking violet. And uh, it turns out because I was just talking to them about the wrong stuff. The, somebody else talked to them about the, the, the fact that the products were all uh, uh, non-toxic and safe for kids around the house and were good for the environment. And that really blew their skirt up, you know. And what I was talking to them about, they didn't care. More or less. I mean, it was nice, but they, but it wasn't the thing that they really cared about. So I'm getting a couple of yeses that this has happened to people in the room. And that's because I was not connecting to that person as far as what is important to that person. I was not recognizing that all the stuff about uh, how you know, uh, non-toxic the products were, how safe they were to have around children and pets, and, uh, you know, the fact that they didn't contain phosphates and didn't pollute the environment and, you know, all that kind of stuff, that was going to be much more important to that person, and I didn't know. Well, guess what we're going to do today? What we're going to do today is we're going to give you a simple method. Now, this is not 100%. Nothing is 100%. There are no guarantees anywhere. But this is a tried and true method of personality classification that will enable you within just a few sentences, within less than five minutes, to get a really good idea of what things are important to someone you've just met, to what things, uh, you know, to how they like to receive information. Um, this is something that can help you in your business life. It can is something that can help you in your personal life. I mean, how many of us have uh, you know relatives that we have conflicts with all the time? Oh, they're just like oil and water. You put them together, and blah, there they go. You know, <clears throat> it's all, <clears throat> and everybody thinks it's always going to be that way. Um, it doesn't necessarily have to be that way. So what I'm going to be talking to you about is something where you can that you can use to develop the skill of immediately being um, on the same side of the table as whoever you're talking uh, to. In other words, not being an adversary, not having to put up with an adversarial relationship. It's me against him. It's me against her. You know, that kind of stuff. You don't have to go about things that way if you start to use this really simple tool. Now, what we're talking about is something that's based on something known as the Hartman Personality Test. Now, Dr. Hartman was a guy who uh, developed a psychological test for quickly categorizing personalities. Now, this came into being after the end of World War II, um, there were a lot of guys coming back from the war with something that at that time they called uh, shell shock. And now we, you know, we know more about what th how things work and we know now that we have a name for it called post-traumatic stress disorder. Um, but back then it was simple shell shock. And there were lots, there was lots of this going on after World War II. And, um, the guys in the, uh, you know, the, the psychologists that were talking to these guys needed to know how to um, put themselves on the same side of the desk as the person on the other side. Back in those days, there was much more resistance to, you know, psychology and psychological approaches to problems and things like that. So a lot of the GIs coming home had, uh, you know, had their guard up when they're, you're told you have to talk to a shrink or a psychologist, they, they got real defensive about it. And uh, so Dr. Hartman developed this personality test as a way to, for the psychologists involved to be able to uh, put everybody at ease, put it, you know, talk to someone and put them at ease, make them comfortable. And uh, <clears throat> it worked at that point. They were able to push a lot of people through the line very quickly and help a lot of people that way. I was introduced to this later. Um, many of you know that I was an actor for years and years and years. I studied at the Actors Studio and with Lee Strasberg and places like that. And um, the one of the you know techniques that I was shown to analyze a character. Uh, you know, when you're an actor, they give you a bunch of words on a piece of paper, and uh, 
you know, you're supposed to turn that into a person. So we were shown the, the Hartman personality test as a way to help us analyze the character that we were supposed to be portraying. In other words, uh, as a, like a shoehorn to get us into who this person w was all about. You would simply ta look at the Hartman personality test and uh, answer the questions from the character's standpoint and then see what you came out with, you know, and that would give you a good way into it. I was also um, reintroduced to it later in sales in when I got into real estate years later. Um, <laughs> it's it's a tool that's used all the time by people in sales who've received this kind of training. And uh, I'll tell you right now that when I <laughs> when I went through the uh, the base the you know a more expanded version of what you're going to see here today, I was uh, paying thirty five hundred dollars for the class. So this is real solid information that works. It'll help you design. Uh, advertising, depending on where you're advertising, it'll help you speak to your clients, it'll help you uh, write blog posts and write articles, it'll help you um, with just communicating with people in your daily life. So, I'm going to be do what I'm going to be doing here is is not necessarily showing you the test and all that. I'm going to show you the concepts that the test is based on, and if you can just grab on to this these concepts and march them down the aisle and just start you know, thinking about them and relying on them, you'll find that things uh, will start changing as far as your communication with people. You're going to know more. You're going to be able to tell them. And this is the whole point. You're going to be able to communicate people with people using the subjects that are important to them and also communicating in a way that is comfortable for them to receive the information. Now... Don't worry about taking notes. The slides that I'm using today get a little complicated, and they're also in the shared files folder. So when we're down, done here, you can download them uh, so you have the files for yourself. Now, just to get started, <clears throat> oh, well, I wanted to have that one up there for a little while longer. <laughs> That's okay. We don't need to worry about that. Let's just, uh, I, I just simply want to, um, lead up to a question here. As I said before, we're all in the people business, no matter you know where you're doing uh, business, if you're offline, if you're online, it's all about people. It's all in the end, if you want to build a long-term lasting business, it's all about building relationships with people. And that building relationships part is where a lot of people fall apart. Um, now, we talk about attraction marketing, <clears throat> but you know, and, and, and uh, just being strict, okay, I'm into attraction marketing. Uh, if you translate that, that means the people that uh, automatically and instinctively understand who I am and get along with me are going to be the people that I'm going to be most comfortable doing business with and vice versa. Now, that will allow me to have a certain amount of success, but the most successful people will be the ones who can expand that base the people who can work with all types of different people because they recognize, oh, this person is you know, uh, built this way because of this and this, and they appreciate these things where I don't necessarily. But guess what? I can communicate with them on that level because I understand them. In other words, you expand, they're, they're, you, you have your natural um, sphere of people who are just naturally going to be comfortable doing business with you and are going to trust you. But this is a way where we can expand that sphere and, and exp, uh, you know, expand it to a group of people who are lar is a larger group and therefore makes us more successful if we're able to comfortably communicate with people who aren't necessarily like us. All right, and this is really an art. It's not. Uh, it's not just a trick or anything else. It's an art. Now, let me ask you a question. Quick question. I need an answer in the text chat. See this little guy on the left. This little guy on the left. Um, you know, he's just been here for a few months, 
And uh, this is his general attitude. I mean, this guy, he doesn't like the way the sheet is bunched around his neck. He thinks it's a little cold lying on there. He doesn't li like that nobody's holding him or feeding him or things like that. He doesn't like the way his diaper shapes. And he's just like, eh, 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 grouchy, grouchy, grouchy all the time. How many of you have known a little guy like this before? Anybody? <laughs> you know, just no matter what you do, it's just, oh, oh, God, oh, God, I don't like it, I don't like it, I don't like it. Okay, well, I can name you a couple of my nephews that fit, fit right into that, all right? Now, by contrast, we have this little guy on the right. Okay, so I'm getting yeses in the text chat. This little guy on the right. Now, this little guy, he's on the same bed. He's on the same sheet. He thinks it's all comfy and nice. Everything's funny. This little guy... You could drop him off that bed onto his head, and he would get up smiling. How many of you have known a little guy like this? Give me a yes in the text chat if you have known a little one like that. And I've known a few of myself, <laughs> okay? Now here, <coughs> excuse me, now here is the big question. This is the big question. I want, to, I want you to give me an answer in the text chat. Do you think... These guys were born like this, or do you think this is learned behavior? Give me one or the other. It's either innate behavior, uh, you know, born like that, or else it was learned. So what do you think? Born, innate, born. Yeah, these guys haven't had time yet to learn this. They're learning stuff, but they're learning stuff on a much more basic level, you know. Uh, and they're, they'll, they're, they're just on the cusp of going into things where they'll start to be learning in a way that will modify their behavior. But they're not there yet. And their basic core behavior is already there. So where did it come from? It came from something we call the core personality, which is simply who you are. All right. Now, as we go further into this, I'm going to give you a little bit of uh, a little bit of advice that'll make this fun and it'll make it very revealing. As I start talking about this, think about yourself. Think about how you operate. Think about what you like and what you don't like, what makes you happy, what makes you sad, what makes you angry. And also at the same time, start thinking about those around you. Start thinking about your mother or your father. Start thinking about your sister or your cousin or your next door neighbor or your best friend, you know, and, um, uh, you know, your husband or your wife and start relating these concepts that I'm going to be talking about to yourself and to the people around you, all right? Because we're going to try and zero in on you first and then on everybody else. But remember this, this idea that there is some part of you in the in the very center of you that is innate that you were born with and everything else stems from around that okay and then there's a lot of stuff piled on top of it now here's something else to understand the most common reason that people don't get along with others comes from a lack of understanding of why other people think and act the way that they do why the hell does he always do that? Jeez, I don't get that. Okay, well, <laughs> at that point, we stop asking questions, all right? And um, rather than saying, you know, having any reasons for why that person always does the same thing, then, um, you know, that brings us to a blank wall. But if we can understand the why then that can head off any animosity between us because we can say, oh, I, I, I know why he does that. He does that because this and this and this, all right? Um, and boom, things are diffused. Uh, so what we're talking about here is a, a balance of things. Now, we're going to be dividing things into uh, yellow, blue, green, and red personalities. Some of you may have heard this A, B, C, and D, or one, two, three, and four. There are different variations of it, but it's all based on the Hartman personality test. All right? Um, and if we want to be able to communicate with all kinds of people, we need to know what our primary colors are and what our secondary colors are that are not as... Uh, 
as dominant. And if we do that, we can take the ones that are small in us and work on making them larger um, so that we are a more balanced personality. Understanding our own personalities and why we do things ourselves is the, uh, the way that we can grow and become a more balanced personality. So now keeping in mind those little guys that we saw just a moment ago and their innate personalities, we're going to be dividing things into personalities into four different color groups, blue, red, yellow, and green. Now all of us have a primary color. And that will be followed by a secondary color. Now, no, you know, nobody is all everything. Um, nobody, uh, you know, and by the way, there is no right or wrong here. This is just how we are, all right? We're, we're talking about how we are, not how we should be or something like that, okay? And because somebody is a different makeup of, uh, of the four colors than you are, doesn't mean they're wrong. It just means they're different, okay? <laughs> so... Each of us has a primary color, and many of, those, many of us who have a strong primary color will have a strong secondary color, and then the third and fourth color will be very small. Others will have a, a really strong primary color and a secondary color that's almost as dominant, uh, that, uh, you know, that is very close, where it's hard to tell, is that person a blue or a red? I don't know, okay? Um, and then uh, uh, others will have one color that's really dominant and, and the others sort of fade into the background, all right? So what we're going to try and do is we're going to start talking about the different classifications here. We're going to go through them all, uh, sort of, we're going to start out being very uh, general, speaking very in, in general terms, and then we're going to start zeroing in and zeroing in and zeroing in. And then, now here we're getting to the part where I, I want you to pay attention to you. Um, it's okay to comment. I'm not too, um, you know, good with watching the text chat at the same time, um, but this one is a good one to be having a conversation with. And... Uh, the, the uh, you know as as you go you can point out that if you'll see your I, your I, I I swear to you you're gonna be there's gonna be light bulbs going off you're gonna be clicking your fingers and going oh 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 that's Uncle John you know oh that's me oh that's my husband you know <laughs> things things will be happening here that will start to make this actually really fun uh, and you'll start to see ways I'll give you some ways that you can actually apply this. Uh, in your business and in your day-to-day -day life, I'll give you the exact questions that you need to ask of somebody you're just meeting that are just nice social questions that will reveal a lot to you, okay? So that you can, in five minutes, of, uh, within five minutes of meeting someone, sometimes less, sometimes uh, even on the phone uh, with just one question, you know, can figure out what you should be talking to this person about and how they'd like to be hearing about it. All right, so here we go. First thing we're going to do is we're going to divide things into four quadrants. Now, these are yellow, blue, green, and red. Everybody falls into one of those four general quadrants. Now, uh, we're just going to, at this point, um, ascribe words to them. Yellow is amiable. They get along, okay? Blue is expressive. They're, they're you know... Um, demonstrative and expressive. Um, green is very analytical. Let's have the, the numbers and the, you know, uh, uh, the cross the T's and dot the I's. Okay, very analytical. They'll want to take things apart and understand how they work and re-engineer them. Um, red is driven. This is the person, get out of my way. Uh, I'm going to succeed, okay? Um, I'm going to, uh, you know, find a business that I like, then I'm going to reinvent it, create it in my own image, and you will all follow me. All right, so those are the four quadrants, yellow, blue, green, red, and they work against each other and with each other in different ways. All the rest of the slides, um, you know, there are several, not all, several slides here are built around the quadrants, and they all have relationships. In other words, red and green um, are related in some ways, and they are antithetical in, in some ways. Blue and red are related in some ways, and yet they, they have major differences as well. Red and yellow, blue and green, 
yellow and green. You know, they all have relationships with the others, but they uh, all have things that make them very distinct from the others as well. And we're going to use this quadrant style to demonstrate that. Now, here's the main thing. How you behave is determined by what you need and what you want. This is, uh, for an actor, and look into my past, for an actor, that's vital. Uh, you know, if you get into method acting, the whole, the, the whole question is, before you want, walk out on stage, you know, need to know what that character needs, what he wants, what his, what his obje you know, what's the objective? What's your objective in walking out into this room and talking to these people at this time? What do you want? What do you want? What do you want? That's the basis of method acting, is understanding that. Um... So your behaviors, how you act, is determined by your needs, by the things that you need, and the things that you want, all right? Now, our needs and our wants, those things, those are determined by our motives. We have different motives at different times, but our core motive, remember the two little guys? Our core motive, that thing you're born with, that thing that you don't have to learn, that makes you either the smiling guy or the crying guy, all right? Your core motive will give you your core personality color. That's what we're talking about, all right? So the core color comes from the same thing as you saw in that first graphic with the two little baby guys, all right? So your behaviors, how you behave, how someone behaves is determined by what they want and what they need. Now, what they want and what they need are determined by their motives and especially their core motive. All right, are you guys following me? Give me a yes in the text chat if you're following me. Uh, or, or no if I've lost you completely. This will start out being a little confusing. Okay, uh, it'll, it'll be a little confusing. However, what's going to happen is it's going to get clearer and clearer as we go into more detail. Cool, cool. Uh, now, let's talk about motives, all right? We just figured out motives, I mean, uh, how important they are, and they stem from your core personality. Well, let's talk about them. The yellow personality, the motive is peace. They do not like conflict. They don't want to be toe-to-toe -to -toe or nose-to-nose -nose with anybody, all right? Now, their needs and their wants stem from the motive. Their needs, they need to have their own space. Don't crowd me, all right? Don't push me around. Um, just, you know, why are, why, are you, why are you in my space? <laughs> you know, you can tell me that without... Um, infringing on my space, right? You, why are you, you know, don't, 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 uh, don't, you know, infringe in here. They need tolerance. They don't like intolerant people, okay? Um, they need tolerance. They need people to get along with each other. And they need to feel good on the inside, all right? They need to feel nice. They need to feel happy. Now, what they want is kindness. Because of those needs and that motive, they want people to be kind to each other and nice to each other. They go about being kind to other people. Now, they want also independence, all right? They don't want to be um, shackled down to something that prevents them from going and doing a kindness for somebody else, for instance, all right? Um, and they need contentment. But, uh, you know, notice the feeling good on the inside. Now, this, this is the yellow personality divided into P motives that stem from the, you know, that, that, that then dictate the needs and the wants, all right? All of those things add up to coming from that motive of peace. Now, let's look at the green. There are, there are some things that are similar here. However, the motive is different. The motive is intimacy, in other words, uh, there's, there's a difference between peace and intimacy. Um, intimacy is feeling close, feeling um, nurtured, feeling uh, a part of, all right? No, notice that peace, 
The motive is a little different. They need to be. No, uh, they need to have their own space. In 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 under the intimacy in the green, they need to be understood. All right. There's a difference there. They want people to understand what they're what they're all about and what they're doing. They need to be accepted. Now that's different than tolerance. <laughs> right. Um, they, they in other words. Um, they like to be, uh, they feel better being a part of a group. They don't necessarily care if that group is tolerant of, you know, is intolerant of certain other types of people. Um, as long as they're accepted in it, that's good. All right. Uh, and they need, now here's a big difference. They need to be good morally in the moral sense. In other words, the green needs to know that they, um, have abided by all the rules in their own personal moral code or in the moral code that they have accepted. That's different than the, than the yellow, who just needs to feel good on the inside, okay? As opposed to, I have dotted all the I's and crossed all the T's in this moral code and I have abided by it. Now, what the green personality wants is quality, quality in everything. They don't like shoddy work at all. Uh, uh, they they uh, want autonomy. The, with, with somebody who's a green personality, you want to give them a job and leave them alone because they are going to spend hours creating quality. They are going to dot every <laughs> I and cross every T and figuring figure out all the possibilities and work on it and work on it and work on it and get it right. And they want security. All right? Um, security so that they know that tomorrow they can come to the same place and do the same thing. Um, that kind of, that kind of security and they don't want to have to worry about money and they don't want to, you know, worry about these things. So that's the, the basis of the motive needs and wants of the green personality. Now the blue, here we go into, we're going on the other side of the quadrant. You can see there's, there are similarities between the yellow and the green. Uh, <clears throat> And now, but now we're moving on to the right side of the quadrant, which is uh, basically a lot of differences here, okay? The blue, the motive is fun. Fun, 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 fun. They need to be noticed by other people. They want everybody looking at them. They need approval from the masses. They want large groups of people applauding, standing up, saying, oh boy, you're so good at this or you're so good at that. And they le need to look good socially. In other words, uh, I always like to go to his parties. He has the best parties. Or look, or you know, you when you when they show up somewhere, uh, they want to be you know wearing the best stuff and uh, have the latest haircut and you know that kind of stuff. This is the blue personality. Does it sound familiar to any of you guys who know me? All right, <laughs> they they want. The motive is fun, so they need to be noticed. They need to be have approval from the masses. Um, they want. Happiness. They want to be happy. If you're going to make them unhappy, they're going to leave. That's it. Okay. Uh, <laughs> they they uh, just can't stand spending any time um, being unhappy or moping around or you know drudgery or things like that. They they want freedom. They want to be free and on their own to make their own decisions all the time. And they like adventure, but they like a playful adventure. In other words, um, this is, you know, this is somebody who uh, might go skydiving, but, uh, you know, they're going to go do it one time. They're going to do a tandem jump, and they're going to do it in the safest way possible, uh, even though it's, you know, it's thrilling and it's a little bit dangerous, um, but they're going to, you know, they're, 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 they're still going to do it. And they're going to have a lot of fun. They may not do it ever again. <laughs> All right. Um, now, let's go down to the red. Now the red, different motive. Motive is power. Now they, the, the red personality from that motive, the needs become to be right. They need to be right. You can't, uh, you know, if, if a red personality and you're dealing with a red personality and they are wrong about something, forget about telling them. <laughs> Forget it, because they need to be right, and they'll figure out a way in the conversation to make sure that they end up being the one that was right all along. Okay, they need approval from a select few. They don't necessarily need approval from the masses the way the blue does. Like uh, the blue likes an audience, the red 
doesn't necessarily need an audience in that same respect. They need a few powerful people on the board that elect them, that that uh, make them the CEO, that say, that say, yes, we're going to follow you. Okay. In other words, they don't need approval from people who earn minimum wage. They need, the red needs approval from a select view. You know, if you earn more than $250,000, then I care what you say about me. Otherwise, forget it. Now, they need to look good technically. Technically, I mean, they need to have other people um, look at them and say, boy, he knows what he's talking about. That he really knows his stuff, you know. This is the guy that I'm going to follow, in other words. Um, now, they they want productivity. They want, you know, Turn out your work. Let's get it done. Let's get it done. Let's do this now. Um, and they want leadership. They want to be in a leadership position. If you are dealing with a red personality and you're trying to bring them into your MLM or network marketing company, guess what's going to happen? They will be wonderful. They'll build huge businesses, but they are certainly not going to do it the way you're doing it. They're going to not use the systems that you use. They're going to not going to pay attention to coming to your webinars or anything else. They're going to go out and they're going to have their design their own system. They're going to have some programmers come in and they're going to spend several thousand dollars on making their own internet marketing system built around the business that they've just joined you in. And they're not going to come to any of your webinars. They're going to start holding their own. Okay. And that's what's going to happen with them. So uh, th then these guys are the guys that like a really challenging adventure. These are the ones that climb Mount Everest. All right. Uh, these are the ones that, uh, you know, go down and, and uh, uh, be a, hold records for time spent in, in diving bells under the sea and submersibles and stuff like that. This is a whole different class of things. Now, if you look at this, you'll see there's there's similarities on the right-hand side between the blue and the red. There's similarities on the left-hand side. There's also similarities be in, between the top and the bottom quadrant. Um, and they all have a sort of relationship, but these are the four basic colors and how they stem from their motive. Now, how they work together and how this can start working for you as a way of um, understanding things is sort of outlined here. Now, this is the one I t uh, that people go, oh, this looks intimidating. I don't know what this is. This is all about how they work together and how they work against each other, what things are similar and what things are uh, dissimilar between the colors. Remember this, and this will give you uh, a clue to everybody. Everybody wants to avoid tension. Now, when I say tension, here's what I mean. I mean that feeling in the pit of your stomach that's like grinding, uh, that that kind of pulls you down into yourself, that makes uh, makes it feel like there's something about to drop on the back of your neck, like there's a weight there, that's that's uh, anxiety, and you know just uncomfortable. Uh, are you guys familiar with this feeling? Anybody? This is tension, and it doesn't take you anywhere. Everybody knows it's a negative it's a negative feeling it's a negative place to be and everybody wants to avoid that feeling all of the personalities nobody likes to go there so this is the one thing that all four personality classifications have in common they don't want to go to that tense purple place in the middle of this card <laughs> all right <laughs> Excuse me. They don't like that. Nobody likes it. And so how do we all avoid it? Well, we avoid it in the ways that we've just described in the four quadrants between yellow, blue, green, and red. However, now as we all avoid it, number one, we do it in, in, different, in different ways. Um, and some of those ways relate to each other. And some of those ways are directly opposed to each other. And here's how they work together. Uh, the uh, yellow and blue have in common, as a means to avoid tension, that they are very open personalities. Okay? They're um, out there, you know, they're, they're fairly easy to um, get inside of, to relate to. 
Um, they, they, you know, put the door open and say, <laughs> put the sign out, you know, the open sign out for business and say, uh, come on in, you're welcome. All right. They're very open personalities where the green and the red are more closed personalities. Now we're talking about these orange ovals that we have here. The green, the green personality and the red personality are very hard to get inside of. Uh, they're, they, they are more protective of themselves. They have the door closed uh, and, uh, you know, the sign will say, please knock and sit, sit in line for an interview <laughs> as, to whether, as to whether or not we're going to let you in or not, you know. Um, now, the, the yellow and the blue completely avoid contact, conflict. They, 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 don't, they don't like conflict at all. And they, uh, they don't want to be in fights. They don't want to be head-to-head -head about anything. So they avoid that. And the yellow avoids conflict by giving everybody options all the time. Well, we could do that. We could also do this. Or well, we could do it that way. The way I think we should do it is this. But if you have a better idea, <laughs> okay? And sometimes it can be hard uh, to get a decision made in a group that has a lot of yellow people in it. Because they're going to be, oh, yeah, well, we could do that. That would be very good. So the, we, we, we could set it up that way and then blah, blah, blah. And the other person says, yeah, that would work and it would be really fun. But then the other, on the other hand, we could do it the way you said. And then, <laughs> right? And then they go back and forth agreeing that we could both do it the way the other person said. And they go round and round and round a lot because they're discuss discussing options. And they want options. They want to give other options. Um, so there's all these choices all the time about what could be done and what could, you know, we, this and that. And um, so there, there, there can be a lot of going around in circles with everybody smiling at each other. <laughs> but actually nobody making any decisions, right? Now the blue avoids contact, co uh, conflict by uh, just demanding their freedom by having freedom all the time. Uh, if something becomes conflict, uh, conflicting or threatens to get a blue personality into a conflict of some kind, what happens? They go. They leave. They disappear. They don't show up. They go somewhere else because there's no fun here. So they go someplace else where there's fun. Oh, I'm sorry I missed the meeting. I was skydiving. <laughs> oh, sorry I missed the meeting. I went hiking with a bunch of friends, you know. Um, that's, that's the blue personality. Um, so the, see, they're doing the same thing. They're both avoiding conflict, but they're doing it in two different ways. Um, and all of that has to do with avoiding tension. Now in the closed personalities, the green and the red, they actually use conflict. They don't mind conflict. They don't mind standing toe to toe. The green, although it sounds like a sort of introverted personality, it's not because they will stand up for their right to analyze anything. <laughs> they want answers. That's how they use conflict. Okay? They avoid tension by getting answers, asking questions, 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 questions. They want answers to this. They want answers to that. If you take a, blue, uh, a green personality and you say, okay, we are here on this map. And then down here, uh, a mile and a half, there's a driveway with a house in it, and that's where you go. All right? Boom. All you have to do is go from here to there and turn in that driveway. And the green personality is going to say, okay, I got that. But right down here, about 400 yards, there's a driveway to the left. What's in there? <laughs> what happens if I turn in there? What do I find? And, you know, it has nothing to do with... Um, you know, what's, what's, you know, if they simply drive down the road and turn into the right driveway. It has nothing to do with that. But they're going to ask you about this driveway that they see on the map just a couple hundred feet down the road here on the left. Oh, and then there's that other one on the right. And down on that one on the right, if I go in there, there's like three branches in there. What's down in there? And they're going to ask you all these questions. They're going to ask you about every driveway on that map all the way down to the end. And then they're going to find out more questions that they can ask. How many of you guys have had a... Uh, you know, a prospect like this in your business. It's questions, 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 questions. This is a green personality. And the only thing you can do with somebody like that, uh, you know, I've, I've uh, my, my way of handling it, being the blue, I'm like the antithetical green person, <laughs> right? <laughs> I'm, I'm like completely on the opposite side of the quadrant, in the, <laughs> on the other side and on the other uh, 
on the, up above the halfway line. So uh, I'm, I'm like, okay, here, here's what I'll do. I will send you a copy of the complete play pay, pay plan and you can figure it out, okay? Because numbers aren't fun and I hate them. So <laughs> it drives me crazy when I have to talk to people about, I've never understood a pay plan in my life. I don't care. You know, I work for a company that pays me really well. That's all that I care about. And I mean, as far as the pay plan goes, because I'm a blue. But that green person, they need to spend hours pounding those numbers and putting it together for themselves and seeing what it means to them and seeing if anybody over there made a mistake that they could call them out on. <laughs> okay? So uh, that, that, the green wants answers. Now, the red, the red wants structure. Um, this is what I ta uh, talked to you about. They're not afraid, you know, they use conflict, but they're um, not uh, intimidated at all by your system or how you built your business. They want their structure. And so they will create it again. They will do it in their own way. And then they want everybody else to do it the same way. Okay, these are the people who have a need to be duplicated. Uh, and that's so, so they will create this structure. Um, that the people who come and work with them are going to follow, all right? Now, on the, uh, on the other side of the quadrant, so this is how the yellow and the blue and the green and the red, as, you know, the upper and lower parts of the quadrant, um, do the same thing, avoid tension. Now, let's look at the left and the right. Now, the left is the yellow and the green, and they avoid, they have uh, rather indirect methods of communication, they're not the people that are going to say to you, you're an ass, <laughs> or I don't like that, you know. <laughs> the, that's not the approach that they're going to use. Um, they're going to communicate about things in a different way. The yellow is going to be, uh, you know, uh, as I say, they're both going to be indirect communicators. But the differences between the yellow and the green um, are that the yellow is going to be more reserved than the green, and they're going to seek advice. They're going to ask for help. What would you, you know, what do you think we should do here? What do you think? Um, uh, I think I think we should do this, but, you know, uh, I may be wrong. And so what do you think about this? Now, the green is going to be a little less verbal. They're going to sit there, and they're going to take in everything. They're going to read everything. They're going to take everything in. And then when something goes wrong, they're going to blame themselves. Oh, God, I should have seen that. Oh, geez, I should have, you know, I, I read that paragraph and I just didn't understand it like that, so I did it this way. Oh, I'm such an idiot, okay? Are you guys starting to see a little bit of maybe yourselves in the yellow or the green? <laughs> Give me a yes in the text chat. If starting to see a little, oh, yeah, oh, yeah, that's me, or oh, yeah. I think somebody in here already said, oh, yes, I'm starting to see a green. Um, you know, the yellow, when something goes wrong, they're going to seek advice, Okay, if, if, you know, I can't get this to work. Can you see a way I've done this wrong? Or, you know, or is there something I can make, it, you know, some way I can make this work better? The, the green, on the other hand, is just going to be quiet all the time until the whole thing blows up, and then they're going to blame themselves. Oh, damn, I should have seen that. <laughs> okay? Now, on the other side, the right-hand side of that quadrant, we have the direct communicators. We have the blues, and we have the reds. They're going to tell you exactly what they think. I don't like that. Here's how we should do it. All right? That's what, that's what they're going to say. Oh, uh, I'm, uh, you know, if, if they messed up, okay, then, then they're, they're, they're going to have a very direct way of expressing that. Or if you messed up, they're going to have a direct way of expressing that. But they're going to do things a little bit differently. The blue is going to be more outgoing. Um, they're going to give advice all the time. Uh, <coughs> you know, I teach these classes. I talk to people on the phone. <coughs> <coughs> Sorry. Um, and, uh, you know, they're going to be out there. They're going to be, <laughs> you know, outgoing, and they're going to give advice. Now, the, the red is going to be more verbal. They're going to talk all the time. They're going to talk and talk and talk, and if something goes wrong, they're going to blame others. All right? Um, because, uh, you know, the, because as we saw before, they have a need to be right. So uh, if their structure that they're creating has a problem, it's going to be because somebody's not executing it correctly. All right. The blue, 
uh, if if something that's going wrong, you know, that what they're going to do is they're going to they're going to instead of just saying to somebody it's it's because you're not doing it correctly, they're going to go and they're going to say you know it would work better if you did this and this and this. They're going to give advice on it, all right, on how to make it work better. Um, in general, the red is more confrontational, and you know, I mean, the motive is power as opposed to the motive being fun. Um, so. Those are the way these four work together and the way they um, oppose each other. And you can start to see a relationship in here. Now, listen, if, you, if you're a blue personality and you're dealing with a green, it can be very frustrating. But it doesn't have to be frustrating if you consider what you're seeing on the screen here. If you just realize, okay, well, this is the way they need to receive the information. This is the kind of information that they like to deal with. So why not just provide them with the, this is, uh, in other words, this is their way of having fun. Fun is what matters to the blue. So, you know, if you interpret it in how it is important to you, you can see, look at a green and you can say, oh, here, have this pay plan, pay, pay, PDF of the pay plan and go to town, have fun, <laughs> you know? The green is not thinking of it that way. They're thinking of it as their duty that they need to perform. And, uh, you know, but guess what? They enjoy that. Now, the yellow, the red may have trouble dealing with the yellow because the yellow is just going to have all these choices going on and on and on and on all the time, and it's not going to want to stand up for themselves. And the red may find them very, very frustrating to deal with. But if a red personality can bring it upon themselves to understand where the yellow is coming from, then, uh, you know, the, yellow, the, the red personality can put two yellows in a room and say, listen, why don't you guys discuss this for eight or ten hours and just really have a good time? If you want some refreshments, just call and I'll send them in, you know. And you can have that kind of attitude about things when you're communicating with people who don't do things in the same way because they have a different motive, then you can really go a long way to uh, making thing, making it so that everybody can work together. Now, here we're going to get into some basics. I'm going to start going really fast. All right, yellow personality. Notice the number in the upper right-hand corner, 35%. I'll tell you why that's important in a few moments. Now, the occupations of yellows are going to be teachers, nurses, counselors, things like that. They're going to be working in the hospital. They are helpers. They want to put the West Wing on the hospital. They give of their time. They donate their time for the benefit of others. They like to be part of a team. They're followers. They don't like to lead necessarily, but they want to be part of a team. Now, they can be indecisive, which can drive some of the other colors crazy. And oftentimes they feel guilty. Not guilty because, oh, I should have known better, which is the green guilty. They're yellow guilty. Oh, I could have done more. I should have done more. All right? They are not money motivated. Remember, they like to feel good inside. That's what motivates them. Now, their voices are not like mine. <laughs> their voices are soft and casual, and they talk like this. They dress in a casual and a comfortable way. Their strengths are that they are dependable, they are team players, they are extremely patient, and they're supportive and nurturing. Their weaknesses, they can be oversensitive. They are followers, as I said, not leaders. They're not goal-oriented. So if you say, you know, get so many subscribers in such a period of time, that's a goal that they can uh, pursue, but it's not really going to get them going. It's not the kind of goal that, you know, uh, the thing that makes them, uh, you know, feel good inside. So it's not <laughs> necessarily. So, um, you know, they're, they're just simply not very goal-oriented. Now, their key words are team, together, relationship, family. All of those uh, words, you know, can't we all get along? Let's be friends. They dislike pushy people, they hate bullies, and they don't like conflict. Now, here's what's important to you. Notice that 35% in the upper right-hand corner. And remember the occupations. Remember the voice being soft and gentle. All right? Just keep those things in your head, because I'm going to very quickly tie this into you and your business very soon. Now let's look at the green. 
The green, notice the 35% in the upper right-hand corner. Their occupations, accountants, secretaries, engineers, researchers, numbers, numbers, numbers. They are skeptical. They need more information. They're always asking questions. If you are talking to a green prospect and something costs $1.97, don't tell them two bucks because you lied to them. It's $1.97, okay? Okay. <laughs> They're organized and they're very neat. They are the people who have those desks that look like, you know, uh, in Ikea shots and, <laughs> the, you know, the way you can never keep yours. Um, that's how their desk looks. They are perfectionists, which is not necessarily a good thing, guys, because um, it, it can drive them crazy and make them worried and guilty you know, nobody's perfect, so when they fail at being perfectionists, they tend to hit themselves over the head with it. They can be unforgiving and resentful. In other words, if you're not perfect either, they can hold that grudge till kindergarten. Uh, if you tell them it's a dollar, uh, it's two dollars when it's a dollar ninety-seven, they're gonna remember it. They are very committed and loyal. If you can go through the process of sponsoring a green into your business, they will be there forever. And they will work consistently, day in and day out, building their business. All right? As long as you give them the autonomy to do that. <laughs> um, they are committed and loyal. Um, money is equals security to them. So this is something to keep in mind. Um, these are the people who like to talk about, uh, you know, the pay plans. Now, their voice, notice the similarity between the yellow soft and polite uh, instead of soft and casual, okay? There's a, there's a slight difference there, but pretty similar. They're formal and conservative in their dress. They're organized planners. They're accurate, persistent, and they follow through on everything. Their weaknesses are they're over-analytical. They can sit there for hours going over the same numbers, and, you know, when uh, anybody else would look at it in five minutes and say, okay, I don't understand it, let's go, <laughs> right? They can be very hard to please because they're perfectionists. And that can all make them depressed and they can be very lonely. Now, the key words are why. Why, 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 why. And they like graphs and charts and research and everything to be exactly, exactly. Now, they dislike pushy people, no facts, being lazy, and lazy people. Now, notice the 35%, that number. In the yellow and in the green, that 35% up there means this. 35% of the world population will fall squarely within the green category. By the same token, 35% of the world population will fall squarely in the yellow category. Now here comes the big deal. Because I know these kind of occupations and this kind of voice uh, applies to the green. And I know that this, these type of occupations and these, this type of voice apply, applies to the yellows. I can do a very amazing thing. If I am calling on the phone to talk to a prospect and I say, hi, is Jerry there? And the voice says, hi, this is Jerry. Uh, how can I help you? Guess what? Right there. I got a pretty good idea because 70% of the population is either green or yellow and their voices are soft. I have a pretty good indication that I'm probably speaking to a green or a yellow right there. I start to know what things are important to them. Now, the yellow is going to be interested in, you know, the fact that my, my products are um, bio, uh, biodegradable and they're good for the planet and they're safe for children, right? Um, the green is going to be uh, wanting to know about the pay plan and things like that. So just from the way Jerry answered the phone, I know it's either going to be safe products or pay plan that I'm going to be talking about. Are you guys following that? Now, if I, you know, now if I want to get a little more into it, I'm going to give you the the two questions 
that I uh, always ask people when I talk to them on the phone. The first question is this, what do you do for a living now? <laughs> okay? And if that person who has a soft voice says, oh, uh, <coughs> excuse me, says, oh, I'm a counselor at a junior college, then guess what? I know I have probably got a yellow personality. And I know that right from that point, I'm going to be talking about the fact that my products are biodegradable and they're safe to have around children. Okay? I'm not going to be talking about the pay plan. Now, if I say, you know, oh, what do you do for a living now? And that person says, oh, uh, you know, I'm an accountant. I work at such and such and such and such. Then I know I'm probably going to be talking about the pay plan because the person's a green. Now, get this. There's one other question you want to ask. Oh, do you like that job? Okay. Because there's some people who are not in the jobs that they're in because they like them. They're in them because they hate them. Um, so you get a, somebody with a soft voice, uh, says they're a counselor at a junior high school, you know, uh, and you say, oh, uh, you know, you, you might be thinking that person's a yellow. Uh, and, uh, you know, so you, you say to them, well, do, do you like that job? And they say, no, actually, I can't stand those damn kids. <laughs> I'd really, you know, I'd really like to be a secretary for a research scientist or something like that. Um, I like working with numbers and I like doing this and that. Oh, okay, then you're a green. But the voice gave me the first in as to what I was looking for because 70% of the population is going to be either green or yellow as their primary color. Now, let's go a little further. I'm going to go very quickly. I think we'll get out of here about 10 after. 15% of the world population is going to be blue. Their occupations are, they're into sales, they're into entertainment, they're actors, <laughs> they're public speakers. They tend to be big thinkers. Somebody else has to put it into play, but they think big and they get the big ideas going first. They love to tell people uh, stories to get their point across. Um, they will initiate the team and be the leader of the team. Okay? Um, uh, they all, but it better remain fun or they'll be gone, okay? They often talk with their hands. <laughs> I'm doing it right now. They take huge risks. Huge risks. Um, they will just commit themselves to something and dive out there, all right? Um, they have no regrets. Regrets are not fun. They are living in the past. So you don't have them. You just move forward. They are money motivated because money equals fun. You can't go skydiving, without money, okay? Their voice is loud and fast, big surprise. They dress in a flamboyant, stylish way. I was the first guy in my high school in 1968 to wear a Nehru coat, okay? <laughs> they are promoters, they're convincing, they're enthusiastic, they have high energy. Their weaknesses are they talk too much, they have terrible time with follow-up. So when I tell you I'll call you next Tuesday, you better call me next Tuesday because I'm terrible at it, okay? They are unorganized. I'll tell you right now, my desk looks like a lumber mill threw up. Um, and they tend to exaggerate the way I just did, all right? Their keywords are fun, excitement, freedom, lifestyle, fun, fun, fun. They dislike not having fun, fun, fun. They can't stand facts and figures. This is where the, the green thing really gets me <laughs> because I can't even remember my my, you know, street address because it's got these numbers in it uh, and they dislike being bored they just will not be bored you know that's the blue now 15% is is blue I'm gonna go on red 15% is red so if you answer if you got somebody on the phone you know hi is Jerry there and Jerry says this is Jerry who's this I know, okay, I got a 30% chance now that this person's either a red or a blue because they're not green and they're not yellow because they're not talking like this, all right? Um, the reds, uh, you know, what do you do now? Oh, I'm an attorney with blah, 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 blah. <laughs> you know, oh, okay. Uh, they're airline pilots. They're CEOs. They're politicians. They are police officers. The bull in a china shop is their style, okay? Uh, they're, it's their way to the highway. Make a decision now. How many of you guys have ever had somebody who uh, you were talking to about their network marketing company and they said to you, well, you know, we, we need people who are ready to go and want to go right now. 
Uh, we don't need, need people who can't make up their minds. What do you think? Do you want to join us or not? Have you ever had anybody say that to you? I have. <laughs> and I was dealing with a red personality, okay? Uh, that's, that's, a, that's a very typical red personality approach. They're always right. Um, they're not very compassionate. Okay, they are in command and they live by comparison. He who has the most toys when they die wins. Okay, that's you know I'm no little boy. I make two hundred and seventy-five thousand dollars a year. See what I mean? Uh, money is the way you keep score. Their voice is forceful with volume. They dress for success. These are the guys with the power ties. All right, um, they're focused. They're goal-oriented. They're very intense. Their weaknesses are their ego is the size of Des Moines, Iowa. Um, they are short-tempered. They're dominating. They're impatient. And they are unteachable. As I said before, you can't teach them how to do your business your way because they're going to go out and create their own way of doing it, and they'll be successful at it. Um, keywords are money, power, control. Get to the point. Get to the point. Let's get to the point, shall we? Um, they dislike indecision, chit-chat. And they really dislike losing control. So, what I'm telling you guys is this. From the time a phone rings, when you call somebody to talk to them about their business, they're a lead or something. When they answer the phone, you have a 70% chance of categorizing them correctly by how they answer the phone. Hi, is Renee there? This is Renee. Can I help you? Right? Well, if I hear that, I know I'm not dealing with a red or a green or a blue right there. Oh, a few minutes, a couple minutes later, I'll, well, you know, Renee, I'm, I'm just uh, calling because I got your name as somebody that might be interested in working from home. Is that true? I, yeah, I put my name in on some things. Well, listen, Re uh, Renee, what do you, is it okay if I ask you a couple questions? Okay. Well, what do you do now, Renee? Uh, I'm an accountant. You're an accountant, Renee. Yeah, where do you work? Oh, I work at Podsnap and Vilbo. Really? Do you like that job? Uh, I don't know. Not, not really. It's just kind of drudgery. What would you rather do? Well, I don't know. I'd like to be a nurse or something like that. Somewhere I could help people. Now, I've just discovered in that conversation that I'm dealing with a yellow personality. And I'm going to be talking to her about, well, you know, she can augment her income in her spare time by helping other people to clean up their homes uh, with products that won't poison their children and to help clean up the environment so our children in the future see where I'm going. I know what I'm going to be talking to this person about. And it's going to be the same thing that interests her. It's not going to be what is fun for me, right? I want to talk about the trips that we all take and the things that we do and, you know, how we can, uh, you know, perform in, in uh, webinars and, you know, all the thing that, things that make this kind of stuff exciting for me. But that's not what's going to be important for her. And I, out in, in those few questions, boom, I figured it out. Now, if I answer, hi, may I speak to Renee? And I hear on the other, line, uh, the other end of the line, yeah, this is Renee, honey, how can I help you? And I go, I go, hi, Renee. I got your name off of, uh, you know, from uh, uh, as someone who might be interested in working offline, with, uh, working uh, from home. Would that be uh, correct? I mean, yeah, sure would. I'd sure like to get the hell out of this job I'm in now. All right, uh, Renee, what do you do now? Do you mind if I ask you a few questions? No, 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 no. What do you do now? Well, listen, uh, I'm, uh, you know, I've been working in this, uh, in a bank and I've been, I'm, I'm a teller, and everybody likes me, and I have fun there, but it's just not what I want to do, you know. Well, listen, would you like a job, Renee, where, you know, you, the, the, you actually get rewarded in things like maybe uh, cruises and blah, 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 and go on to, into the, the, the stuff like that, and you can make good money at the same time? Wow, that sounds like it'd be really fun. You know, I'm dealing with a blue. I'm going to do a whole different thing. Notice the other thing I'm going to do. It has to do with the voices. <coughs> My voice is animated and up there. And if I go on the phone and I say, uh, hi, is Renee there? And I hear, uh, this is Renee. Can I help you? Guess what I'm going to do? I'm going to do, oh, sure, right, uh, Renee. I'm glad you, I got you on the line. Listen, I'm calling because uh, I got the uh, information that you might be interested in working from home. Is that true? 
Yeah, that's true. What did I just do? What did I just do? Anybody? There is a name for that. And it's something you want to do. Are you guys still hearing me? <laughs> it's called mirroring. Um, as soon as Renee said, there you go, Shirley. As soon as um, Renee said hi, I went to hi. Right? Now, if I'm, if I'm generally down like this, you know, if I'm a yellow or a, a green and I'm going to be talking like this, and I say, get on the phone and, uh, hi, may I speak to Steve? Yeah, this is Steve. Can I help you? Well, Steve, yeah, sure you can. I, I Listen, I got your name. You need to come up. Okay? It puts everybody at ease. Mirroring the voice on the phone is a great way for you to make an immediate connection, like Shirley says, an immediate connection with somebody on the other end. Yeah, you get on the same wavelength, the same vibration. You're just operating on the same way. If you're doing this live and you've got somebody who's sitting forward with their elbow on their knee, you sit that way too. You know, if they're laid way back in their chair with their arms over the back, then you sit back and relax and put your fingers in your belt, and, you know. Uh, the same kind of posture, the same kind of vocal force and cadence is exactly what you want to do when you do this. So now what we've done is we've shown you how in three easy questions, you know, just a, a couple of seconds of conversation, really, when you hear them say hello... You can start analyzing. You can start figuring out, <clears throat> excuse me, right then, what you're going to be talking about, how you're going to be communicating with them. You can put yourself on the same side of the table and become cooperators together as opposed to, you know, trying to beat somebody over the head with, join my company, join my company. And, uh, you, you know, instead of doing that, you can immediately come to some kind of uh, an agreement where you're both working towards a win-win situation. And you can do this easier if you understand who these people are. And you can use this as a little way to get a couple of insights into things that will give you a little leg up to being on that same side of the table with them. All right? Does this make sense to you guys? That's it. That's basically the concept behind this. You can go... Take the test yourself at colorcode.com. Now, uh, they use a different system there. The colors are um, put together in a little different way. They use the same four colors, I, I believe, but um, they're, they're mixed around as to who they um, signify. But uh, it, you'll still see from, from what, the, what they are. Uh, how it works over there. You can take the test yourself. You can find out what your heavy colors are and what your, um, you know, light colors are, and you can work on nurturing those ones that are deficient and maybe controlling the ones that are out of control. All right, so that you become more balanced. Have you guys here seen? Have you had anything go off in your head? Give me a yes to the text chat if you started to say, "Oh." That's Uncle Phil, or, oh, that's Aunt Mary, or, oh, I got it, that's my sister, or, you know, anything like that. Or, oh, that's me. That's why I do that. I never figured out why I did that. Anybody have any of these moments go off in your head? <laughs> I just love this stuff. Now, here's what I guarantee you. As you walk around for the rest of the day, you're going to start going, oh, my God, she's a blue. I never figured out she's a blue. <laughs> Listen, download the um, shared file, the files here, uh, the slides from the shared files folder, and study them. Just use them. Just look at them and read them through and think about the concepts and uh, let this creep into your life. It'll show you uh, a great, uh, it'll give you a great amount of insight into people you meet and into people you know and into yourself. And if you start incorporating this into just the way you the way you work and the way you are and as something you do, it'll help you in all areas of your life. I guarantee it. It's helped me. Uh, I'm going to stop this for the purposes of the video because we've gone long. Um, but uh, 
you know, if you're watching this video on Janet's sites or my sites, the place to download the files will be just under the video. And, uh, you know, if you can contact me at any time, uh, my Skype is steve.gehagen. If you got questions about this, and you people in the room, you can stick around. We'll talk about it, and we'll ask questions if you want. Um, thank you all for being here. And uh, next week, I'm, I'll be doing the same thing next week. I don't think Janet's going to be back by next Saturday. But um, we will meet here again, and I'll see the rest of you guys, most of you guys in the Contact List Builder and in the Morning Motivator and all that stuff during this coming week. Thanks for being here, and uh, have a great day, everybody. And remember, what color are you?